So how do you know if, it's, if, if, if the work is successful or not? And this is actually the gentleman who asked the question that of the evidence. This is actually a very, very important question. And uh, thank you so much for asking it. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's about business metrics. So if you deploy the best algorithm in the world with the best accuracy in the world, but it's, it's not increasing your conversion rates, it's not increasing your sales, it's not optimizing your cash, uh, uh, your cash flow, or uh, it's, it's not saving you any money, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, right? Then comes the model metrics. So the model metrics are basically uh, what makes a model a good model and what makes a model a bad model. And this is a very like uh, uh, a very important and a very deep uh, domain that many people measure accuracy, uh, measure a model performance on accuracy, and it can be very very misleading. And this is very important. I won't, I wouldn't go into it this time, but maybe in the next webinar we'll go into model metrics and and how a model, how can you criticize a good model. Now comes generalization. How is your model? How can your model be generalized on a bigger sample of the data set, on a bigger sample of the population? And this is very important. Uh, but you, you, usually it requires a lot of uh, data augmentation and data work. So uh, when it comes to the branches, like Marwan was saying, sometimes you don't have one model for all your branches. You build for every branch a model that works on it. Uh, on, on, on this behavior. For example, having a branch in Zamalek and having a branch in Masri Gidida uh, or in London, for example, those two models behave very differently based on the locality of it, based on the population that lives near it, based on how accessible is it by foot, uh, how accessible is it by car, uh, what are the source next to it. So all of this requires a lot of locality when it when when you're optimizing your algorithms. Then you judge your algorithm based on speed, how how fast it can predict because for example a recommendation engine has to be extremely extremely fast uh, if you're using it with um uh, with uh, an e-commerce website you need to have the recommendation right away otherwise it wouldn't be as beneficial now uh, another thing is explainability so when the model gets an output how explainable is this output so basically you tell the model why are you outputting this output at the end of the day? And the, sometimes, based on the use case, explainability is very important. Other times, it's not that important. For example, when you do facial recognition, sometimes you don't, if, if, if the model is, uh, can categorize the right faces as unique faces versus uh, not unique faces, uh, or, or returning faces, I'm sorry, then if it's, if, if it's classifying them correctly, then you don't really need to understand how explainable is it uh, or how it's doing it. And generally, anything that has to do with neural networks and advanced deep learning, explainability is a big issue and people don't usually understand how, how it reached that output. Mm -hmm. But when it comes, for example, for investing uh, or for uh, uh, SKU sales, for example, uh, explainability means that uh, why is this product selling better? Because it has better shell visibility. It's uh, it's uh, it's in the summertime, so this is why it's selling better. So explainability is really an issue when it comes to the different use cases. Heuristics is does the model make sense? So at the end of the day, when you apply a model like the like the online ordering app. Uh, if, if the store has CV, then they will be more likely to buy from this store. Th this this can be a very very accurate model, but it doesn't make sense, right? Because TV doesn't have to do doesn't have anything to do with ordering online. So heuristics or domain expertise is extremely important when it comes to um, deploying an AI model as well. 